Uh, KBYP, a persistent pest on the topic of lightning, bonding, grounding, and radio equipment. Because that is not a radio topic. I've stated that before. It is a life safety fire topic under NFPA. And F stands for fire. Fire, fire, says Beavis. That's what it's about. Grounding, bonding, all this is about not catching your house on fire and burning you to death in it. <clears throat> and it's also about not following the lies and fantasies from ham radio operators and the RL about grounding your antenna system, which grounds the coax, which grounds the radio, which grounds the, grounds the outlet in your ham shack. That's illegal. It's dangerous. That's a potential fatality. Code forbids regrounding at the load. I've explained that in great detail. The load is where your ham transceiver is. Ah, bother. There's all my stuff. You'll find no ground wires on it. You'll find the only grounds there at the outlet. The ground rod is 75 feet that way. Not another 40 feet that way, making them 100 foot apart. They cannot be bonded together. And when that's grounded in violation of code, you have grounded that outlet down there. See my protection? See the surge suppressors? Because I have applications engineering experience in transient suppression. And I know better than to fall for the myth of grounding the breaker box and thinking that's good enough because it ain't. You got to ground both. You got to suppress both, not ground. You ground that outlet, you've then defeated all the ground fault interrupters on that circuit because the current then can go out to the ground rod you illegally put in the ground and illegally connected to that outlet and the fault current won't go through the GSCI in the breaker box and somebody's dead that's not the point of this video that's kind of the catch up YouTube commenter hello and thanks for this video so I watched Dave Castler's video don't get me started another bullshit artist with a ham license about grounding, and yesterday I put down the 8-foot ground rod and bonded that to the house ground rod with 15 feet of number six copper wire. Illegal. Illegal. I just caught that. I got to correct my response. You may not bond that to the service entrance ground rod with a 15-foot conductor. That's too long. I just caught that. I got to go back and correct one of my uh, comments. But anyway, 15 feet of number six copper wire is an open circuit to a lightning transient. Do you know the formula for calculating wire inductance? I do. It's 0.002L, the square root of uh, log um, of the log of the ratio of the length to diameter minus three quarter. <laughs> That's from. Um, that's from uh, Rosa, his uh, inductance paper, National Bureau of Standards, 1919. You see, folks, I know this stuff. I'm not a blowhard with a ham license like Kasler or the RL. I know the shit, folks. Believe me. Sorry to be blunt, but this is a blunt topic. This is talking about life and death. Now, the spark arrestor plate, getting ready to mount the four that I bought, which would mean the four spark arresters. Then I watched this video and came to a screeching halt. Sounds as though I should take it all back and just unplug everything when not in use. Does that sound correct? You're darn tootin'. Lightning. I've read a statistic that a lightning strike a mile away can induce a thousand volts in a charge in a wire. That's not well defined. That's enough to kill somebody. <laughs> you see, not only is doing this a violation, we are required when installing a new service like this and installing an antenna system and installing grounding and ground rods is a new addition to an existing service in your house or your or your business or whatnot. But you are not permitted under code to install new service or new additions without filing for receiving a permit which approves the system and approves the installation, installing it according to code and then getting it inspected and getting a permit to use it. And you may not use it until it's inspected and approved. That is legal. That's not, that's not radio. That's law. 
It is not an option. It is a requirement. You install this wrong and short after GFI, somebody could die. You might find a body in a hot tub. No joke. This is serious crap, folks. That's why it's legally regulated. But further from that, these jackasses like ARL and this fool Kasler who's got a ham license and thinks he's God Almighty is going to give out engineering advice online are also violating law because it is required legally under code. And it's international code. It's internationally adopted. This is not local, regional, or optional. This is required that new service, these systems and such, must be designed by or directly under the authority and direct control of a licensed professional engineer, and that is typically an electrical engineer. You can't do it. If you're looking online for information on how to do this, you are absolutely unqualified to even touch this question. An electrician is licensed, but an electrician is not a PE. An electrician may not tell you how to install an antenna and ground it. If you get that system approved by your code authority, then a licensed electrician can install it, but I'll bet you they screw it up. Because the code doesn't generally get into this area. Hams usually illegally ignore the code because they have no idea what they're doing. Because they listen to BS artists like these, like ARL and Kasler, who themselves don't know anything about the topic. And they don't know the legal ramifications of it. But it is required that your grounding system be designed by or under the, the authority of a licensed, state licensed, registered professional engineer, not only, not a business license, that's a different license, but a professional registration. I know enough about lightning, the, the complex physics and grounding and propagation and transients to sit here for the next two hours without any reference material off the top of my head, lecture you for two hours on this topic. And I can't tell you how to make a grounding system. Maybe no, none of my videos tell you how to do that because it's number one, not required by code. There it is. The Bible. I showed it to you in my other videos. I got the book. This book does not include the portion of necessary to design a grounding system. No one can design a lightning protection system from this book, and they're lying if they say they can because I've seen the real thing, and this ain't it. Nothing in Article 810, which incorporates amateur radio, says anything about grounding antenna systems or ham shack equipment. It is not in there, and I'll kiss your ass if you can show it to me. Literally. Folks, I got the book. It ain't in here. The only thing that's in here is grounding. Mass and metal structures supporting antennas shall be grounded in accordance with blah, blah. And you may not run coaxial cables over open power transmission lines and, and antennas and lead must be spaced from walls and incidental stuff like that. There is zero in here about grounding that. And anyone that tells you that it is, is lying through their teeth. Lying. No punches pulled here, no words minced. They're liars. And they're trying to get you killed or your house burnt down. Now see where this gets really bad is that in certain activities in engineering, uh, lawyers, doctors, uh, beauticians, cos cosmetologists, um, real estate, all these activities that are engaged in with the public, not, not me working as an internal engineer in a company developing thermostats, and I did that. That's got nothing to do with that. But persons engaged in providing certain services which affect public morals, health, and safety are required to be licensed by their states under professional engineer's laws. And I can assure you these idiots with ham radio license are not that. And if they are, they're required to be licensed in your jurisdiction in order to give you advice on how to do this. And I'll tell you just right straight out, they aren't. They have no idea what they're doing. It is illegal, illegal to ground this station. It is dangerous. I know enough about electrical physics to know why. It is also illegal for me to tell 
then again 34 how to install those suppressors if you notice I don't tell people how to do that <laughs> I'm not a licensed professional engineer therefore I can't tell you how to do that and I can't tell you to do it simply because I know it's wrong and I know the code doesn't require it now no one can tell me that I'm in violation of anything by not grounding my hamshaft because code does not require it and it is not a violation to not do something that's prohibited but further, which I haven't really told you before, if you see that certificate up there on the wall issued by the state of Washington and transferable to the state of Tennessee, that's my wife's PE license. I'm not licensed, but by God, she is. <laughs> believe me, folks, I know this topic inside and out. And believe me, if I asked her to approve such a system, she would refuse. I don't know that area. And that's where the concept of responsible engineer RE comes in. This is a huge deal in public works and nuclear, the world she works in. Extreme safety, liability, hazards, the strangest things you would never expect can kill a person in a nuclear facility. I, I know of an engineer who dealt with a just an ordinary looking electrical box at Hanford. It took special cable seals because somebody opened the electric box and found it had chemicals in it. Chemicals came through the conduits and went in the box, and that's an unexpected hazard and very dangerous. So he told us how the cable runs had to be isolated. The electrician down the street knows nothing about that unless they work in the nuke industry. Then they're not authorized to design any of that. That's done by an engineer. Not allowed, not legal, not permitted, not safe to go get an electrician to tell you how to do this. The electricians know nothing about engineering for lightning safety. It's a specialty. Most EEs know nothing about it. I didn't until I specifically studied the physics behind it, and it's ugly. But again, the point of this video is it is not only illegal and dangerous to ground this equipment, but it is illegal for someone to tell you to do it. That's someone pretending to be an engineer, like OH2DX is ranted about, and others. Ham's, pre Ham's pretending to be engineers. They know it all, don't they? But it is unlawful to give engineering advice to people in the public realm. <clears throat> and someone holding themselves out to be experts by producing videos and books are doing exactly that, and it is illegal. Be glad they don't end, well maybe they should end up in jail maybe that would get a message across i encourage whoever made this post i don't know who danny is but please do us all a favor since since you have i've not witnessed this firsthand i don't watch casler's bs i know he's a blowhard he doesn't know anything he's another ham with a hobby license spreading old wives tales and i, I don't watch that trash i only i only go to mostly PhD level expert text. I don't play with the amateurs because I want reliable information. But since you have fallen for this, since you've been a victim of this and you almost did this, and with all due respect, you don't know what you're doing else you wouldn't be looking on YouTube for information. And I'm certain you did not get code approval for this. So the whole thing's illegal, but turn him into a state professional engineers board for illegally practicing engineering to the public without a license. And watch what happens. These state PE boards can be absolute bastards. Let me tell you. When life's on the line, they can get mean. They caused absolute nightmares, the PE board did in the state of, of uh, Idaho. They threw some serious monkey wrenches into nuclear projects because of a because of an incident. They, they stipulated that, that all project PEs after a certain date had to have originally been on a project and the, the catch 22 was that they were there were no or there were other PEs originally on a project they're not there now what do they do well they're screwed the, you, you think your local cops are bad piss off the PE board and watch what happens sparks will fly so turn this idiot in before he gets somebody killed I can't really do it I've not been victim to his bad information I won't be so, so I, I cannot attest in a public filing that, yea, verily, I saw and that I know and that I, that I, 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 you did. You've seen this. Do us all a favor and turn this clown in. I'll sure appreciate it. KBYP, rant off.
and an additional just for fun with math. If I were from memory, if I were doing this for real, I'd look it up. But Rose has stated inductance formula for straight wires 0.002L times the natural log of the length divided by the radius minus three quarter, where length and radius are in centimeters, and inductance is in microhenry. So 15 feet of number six wire is 458 centimeter. Radius is a quarter of a centimeter. Six microhenry with a crude, crude steady state assumption of one mega one megahertz. Now that that does not apply directly to a lightning transient. That that's a different mathematical system, but just a, just an assumption to give you a feel for number six wire. At one mega cycle, that's 38 ohms reactants, inductive reactants. Put 10 kV across that, and that's 263 amp. If it's a, if it's attempting to pass a thousand amp, what are you going to do with the other 700 amp? Hmm. Or more exactly, what's it going to do to you? N number six wire is a joke. If you recall, if you've ever seen the ground, uh, if you've ever seen lightning rods on top of barns. The cable coming down is what, an inch, inch and a half in diameter? Stranded usually to be formable. That's the kind of conductor size it takes to deal with these high speed, high powered pulses. And this, it is way beyond pissing around with ham radio hobby stuff. This is serious business. And that Mickey Mouse number six wire, you may as well disconnect it. And further, it's a code violation to even bend it. So. There, there's a little little fun math to dip.